Hey guys, nice to see you. This is James, your web dev buddy. In this video series, we're going to present Conva.js. Conva.js is an HTML5 canvas drawing library, as I'm sure you know. It makes it much, much, much easier to draw on the HTML5 canvas than it would be if you tried to use native JavaScript. Conva is free, it's fast, it's simple. What's not to love? So if you're into this kind of stuff, let's get into it. OK, here is our bare bones HTML5 uh, web page. Uh, you can see we're importing uh, the Conva library at the top here in the head tag and my own JavaScript file here below that, little CSS. And in the body, we have a single div in this case with an ID of Conva holder. You can give this div any ID you want, just you need some ID you can reference in your code. Now, what we're not seeing here is a canvas tag, and that may throw you for a loop. Clearly, we need a canvas tag to draw on the canvas tag, right? We do. Conva will create and insert that canvas tag for us according to our specifications. Uh, we'll tell it how wide and how tall of a canvas and where to put it in. Conva may even, at our option, insert multiple overlapping canvases. And that's useful, as we'll see, in, uh, in uh, maximizing performance. It allows you to break your shapes up and put animated shapes on one canvas that gets redrawn as the shapes get animated, and your static shapes can go on a separate canvas element that doesn't get redrawn. But that's an advanced topic, and we'll talk about that later on. For the most part, a single canvas will do you just fine. So let's look at the JavaScript. OK, which I have not written yet. Uh, we're going to start here. I always start with a shortcut to console log, which I just call log. You can do whatever you like. And let's begin by creating in Conva a stage. OK, okay so we've created a stage here, as you can see. Now I'm calling it. Uh, I'm giving it a variable name of stage here, and we're setting that equal to a new Conva stage instance. Notice the capital K on this global Conva object. This is the one object that the Conva library has inserted into our global namespace. And that has on it a stage method here, sort of a constructor method, hence the capital S in case you're wondering. Uh, and that creates a new stage. Think of the stage as sort of a Conva project. Typically, you'll have a single stage on a web page, typically. and this takes one parameter, an object, OK, uh, with typically three or a minimum of three key value pairs here, those being height, width, and container, as you can see. Now, I'm setting my height to the window inner height. In other words, the number of pixels that the window is wide. It's going to fill out the whole screen, both uh, in, excuse me, a uh, height is this way, isn't it? There you go. Uh, so the height and the width will fill up the entire screen, kind of a big whop in Canvas, depending on the size of your page. And finally, container here, container. Uh, is the ID of the, the element that we have, in this case, a div, which I was calling Conva holder, OK? And this is not jQuery. You don't need a hash mark in here or anything like that, OK? So let's continue. Now, we haven't yet told Conva how many canvas elements to add, right? One or multiple. We do that by adding layers to our stage. So we can say const layer. OK, and we add layers to our stage, which is to say uh, canvas elements to our stage, by creating a new Conva layer, which I'm calling layer. You can call this, uh, give this any variable name you like. And we're adding that to the stage. And not to beat you over the head with this, but if we were to add two or three or however many layers, we would then have two or three or that number of overlapping canvas elements like that, because each layer creates and then refers to a new canvas element. OK, and we can check this by coming into our page, which I have opened up here. Uh, and lo and behold, we have a canvas element. OK, great. So uh, Conva has added that for us. Wonderful. Let's get started then by drawing a very simple shape. Let's say a rectangle. How's that? OK, so here we've created a new rectangle. We're calling it rect, setting that equal to a new conva.rect instance. Now, it turns out that Conva has a class, or it passes for a class in JavaScript. For just about every shape you can imagine, there's Conva rect for rectangle, Conva circle for circle, obviously, Conva uh, ring, star, there is ellipse, there's regular polygon, there's line for drawing straight lines, and you can also add text and images. And of course, there, there are ways to, to draw, draw freely on the canvas as well, which are a little more involved. For the most part, you're going to want to stick to the, the, the shapes that come here uh, in the, in, out of the box. So. Let's look at the properties we have here. Right off the bat, we have x, y, and fill properties. x, y, of course, are just coordinates where we want our rectangle to be. Uh, and fill is the fill color, what you would call in CSS, like the background of the background color. They called it fill in Conva. OK, it's different. 
And then finally, because it's a rectangle, height and width. Now, remember that Conva is strictly hierarchical. We need to tell Conva where exactly to put this rectangle. And we can do that by saying layer dot add rect like that. And when we do, save and refresh, and we get our rectangle just as we had hoped. All right, very nice. And it is at the 50-50 mark here, okay? It is 100 pixels uh, in height here and 200 wide, and it's blue. Uh, okay, very nice. The fill color, by the way, doesn't have to be a color word like red or green or blue or pink or mauve or ma mauve, mauve, mauve. It can be, you know, RGB, RGBA, hex, uh, HSV. Is that the other one? Uh, any value you want, but whatever you do, like that, for example, it's now a black rectangle. Okay, that's fine. It can do that, and it will parse that out for you. But let's keep it blue because I prefer blue. All right, that's it. Now, uh, keep in mind here, let's go back to the properties on this rectangle because this is so important. If we comment out the X or erase it all together, it just uh, defaults to zero. The Y too, we can comment that out or erase it entirely. And again, it will just default to zero. We could even uh, get rid of that fill property here. And now we do have up here in the corner uh, a rectangular region with no color to it at all, completely invisible. Perfectly reasonable thing to do if you want maybe a rectangular region that might respond to mouse over events surreptitiously, for example. I don't know if I've ever done that, but you could. Uh, but for the most part, for most shapes, you'll be adding X, Y, and fill properties. Now, the following properties here, the bottom two, height and width, obviously are gonna be unique to shapes like a rectangle, which have a width and height. As we'll see in the next video, when we do a circle, that will have a radius, not a, not a width and height. Okay, final word here. I'm dealing, we're dealing with uh, Conva version eight. I think it's 8.3. something. And in this version, uh, Conva will automatically refresh the canvas, redraw the canvas anytime there's been an addition or a change. So when we added the rectangle, it automatically refreshed the canvas, redrew the canvas. In the past, you would have to do something like this. You would have to call layer.draw, uh, which still works, but it's now unnecessary. You don't have to do that each time, just for your edification. There you go. Okay, now let's go back up here and take a look at these, these properties here. And let's add a few more, because it's a pretty vanilla rectangle here. Let's say stroke, stroke of orange. Now that will add an orange line around it. Think of a stroke in this case as sort of a border uh, in what CSS, what in CSS we would call border. Now that's a pretty narrow one. I think the width, the stroke width there defaults to two pixels, but we can change that by setting it, for example, to eight. Okay, set it to eight. We get that. All right, now that's a much thicker border there, stroke there. We can set the corner radius to something like that as also, eight also, and that rounds off those corners, and that's much like border radius would be in CSS, isn't it? We can set other properties like uh, like the opacity. For example, 0 0.3, set that. Okay, now the thing is almost invisible, or at least transparent, and you can see the white background shining through there. Now, I'm not gonna go through all of the properties, so you can set, uh, you can set rotation, you can scale it in the X or the Y direction, and so forth and so on. You can do all sorts of things. Pretty much anything you can do in CSS, you can do also to these Conva shapes. And I'm gonna get rid of that opacity business here. But now, let's take a step back. We haven't really done anything here in Conva that we couldn't do almost as easily in HTML and CSS, right? Modern CSS3 uh, will let you do pretty much the same thing. So where's the advantage to using a library like Conva? Well, watch this. What happens when we set draggable to true? And I mean, my God, could it be this easy? Let's come up here and try and drag it around. And oh my God, look at that. Yes, it's draggable. Woo! If that doesn't move you, then you have no emotion. Okay, this is fantastic. Okay, I mean, right here, we've opened up the possibility to all sorts of user interfaces and games and all sorts of stuff. And my friends, thank you very much for watching. So just to, just to review, in Condo, we have a stage at the very bottom. Okay, typically a, a single stage a layer or layers on top of that, one or more layers on top of that, and then some shapes added to the various uh, to the various uh, layers like that. And, all right, thank you very much. I invite you to come back for part two where we're gonna talk about uh, a lot of the other shapes that you can draw. Thanks for watching.